This is Beetle Five coming at you with another one of my reaction videos. Today I will be reacting to Carnage versus Lucy Death Battle. Now, this death battle, I, I'm most likely thinking that Carnage is gonna win this. However, what I predicted would happen actually has happened, and that turns out Lucy is in fact stronger in the mangas than in the anime. I've only ever seen the Alpha and Light anime, and in it she is only she has four vectors, which are invisible hands that fuck shit up everywhere they can only travel at a range of two meters and she only has four and they're visible in the manga however she is exactly like the character mariko from the anime the strongest diclodius in that show who has 28 vectors and can attack at a range of 11 meters difference being is that you were able to see mariko's vectors while you still cannot see lucy's and now that's all I know now that's been announced from the manga. But otherwise, Carnage still has the upper hand. He has his own spider sense, which can help him in exactly in that kind of situation. And he's super freaking quick. I think he'd outmaneuver the vectors. And plus, Carnage has survived being torn apart and blown up, which is all Lucy is good at doing. It's just dismembering. So the only thing she could do and Carnage can not die from it? Pretty sure Carnage is going to win this fight. But let us see. Here we go. Oh, hold on. If my ex-wives have taught me anything, it's that there's no real limit to crazy. <laughs> like Carnage, yeah. Marvel's dangerously insane Badass. psychopath. Love Carnage. Or Lucy, the messed up murder lady from Elf and Lied. Still Elf the most... Lead. It's German. Yeah, whatever. He's whiz Tomato, tomato. I mean, and I say it's lie. it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a oh. death battle. Oh, I love how hand-drawn Lucy looks. Cletus Cassidy didn't have the chance to be a well-adjusted adult. He killed his grandma and Because his entire family was down. already crazy. Yeah. While Cletus was just a boy, his father got sent to jail for killing his mother. Favorite song is Freebird. Good on you, dude. Cletus, Great song. Which she did because Cletus had tortured and killed her dog, Fifi. Well, go, Miss Cassidy. All dog murderers deserve death, even if they're eight. Right, Jack Spaniels? <laughs> Good boy. Oh, and uh, Cletus murdered his grandma, too, because eh, she's kind of a Carnage, bitch. I know. He didn't about, stop so. there and wound up burning down his own orphanage. Yeah. Years later, he was finally arrested and convicted for 11 murders. You mean the 11 He's murders been, like, they mutilated to so many points that the Carter Scipio has still fixed them up alone. and made them better In fact, again. His cellmate so many just times. so happened to be Eddie Brock. Who you may know is that creepy guy covered in black ink called Venom. That ink is actually a symbiotic alien known as a Clintar. This symbiote bonded with Eddie, transforming him into a powerful and violent rival for the friendly neighborhood yeah, Spider-Man. Yeah, bonded his bloodstream, but making him stronger than Venom. Was, it was pregnant! Oh, <laughs> Time to go out for cigarettes, Eddie. Extreme well, heat symbiotes actually reproduce and asexually. And when Eddie became magic. Venom once again, the symbiote sort of Evil oozed out its spawn. Came no it made Just like me percent. and my dad. Well, this new symbiote immediately attached itself to Cletus. But unlike the Venom one, it merged through a cut on his skin, creating this suit made out of blood. Ew. That doesn't yeah. seem sanitary. And together, they became Carnage. A fitting name for a psycho mass murderer. Cletus and his new symbiote quickly got up to what they knew best, creating maximum carnage. Awesome game. Remember that game? It was great. It was so and good. New I like Ben the carnage shooter. He was a perfect unit with Cletus. He rarely disagreed with each other. He has the same superhuman strength, speed, more and durability as Venom, and supposedly even greater, like a Venom 2.0. He can shapeshift to make all sorts of killer weapons, like axes, swords, and spikes. He can also dismember parts of his body. He can even rip those weapons yep. off himself or Unlike launch them at his victims. Have you ever tried ripping your fingers off and throwing them at people? Because that's just kind of what Carnage does. Oh, you does. collapsed with the Batman. You <laughs> can also reach out with dozens of chaotic, blood-soaked tendrils. Perfect for strangling the people he doesn't yeah, want to see. Doppelganger. With a single touch, Camouflage, possession, regeneration, shapeshifting, walk crawling, webbing, 360-degree portrait perception. At his leisure. That's he has exactly unbelievable he regeneration, and even if somebody finds a way to disable his suit, the Carnage symbiote lives inside his bloodstream and can come back out through something as meager as a paper cut. Also, the symbiote literally sees everything around it. It's kind of like wearing a suit. 
speed of eyeballs. But let's say you're able to dodge his projectiles, outrun the tendrils, and get out of sight from the eyeball suit. You're still not safe. He will catch you because he can sprout wings and fly. What the hell? Since when? Since realizing that shape-shifting is a really, really useful ability. So he's able to fly, he's totally aware oh, of everything Christ. around him, and he's full of blood? This guy's like a giant mosquito of death. Uh, sure. Carnage has said he's at least 10 times faster than the average man, but that's pretty modest because Venom has shown he can move fast enough to catch up to a bullet after it's fired. And Carnage is frequently shown to be as fast or even faster than him. This puts Carnage over 1500 miles per Damn. hour. Survive being whipped in half my century, which is Marvel Superman. Just travel through the and internet. And he can overpower wire. Spider Man, whose best supported strength was lifting that Spider giant Man. machine thing that weighed as much Defeated as a Spider Man Venom Man with a locomotive, which would put it around 130 tons. And you know those weird tendril things crawling around his body? When he wanted to find a missing journalist in New York, he climbed to the top of the Empire State Building and just stretched them all out over the city. He found her by this coastline, and this building nearby looks a lot like the consolidated Edison plant between 14th and 15th Street. That's about two miles away. And as a thank you for saving her, she shot Carnage in the head. Well, fine. Save your own ass next time, lady. Hey, he was fine. Carnage's durability doesn't come from a sturdy build. Instead, his form is malleable and somewhat fluid. Technically, his human body still exists somewhere in that mass of blood, flesh, and writhing tentacles. But even when he's hit by a train, struck by missiles, or blasted apart by a tritium bomb, he can always just pull himself back together. So long as there's a piece of him still around. Which Given the size is. of that blast, it looks like Carnage survived a blast worth 125 tons of TNT. Very impressive. Also, he once smothered and survived a gene bomb designed to wipe out all of humanity except mutants. He's even survived being ripped in half and thrown into space. Seriously. What kills this guy? Well, he does share the same weaknesses Fire. as other symbiotes. Not Namely, sound, though. extremely loud no, well, noises. Not, not as, heat. not as Well, well until he traded the sound one for a weakness against some Cthulhu-looking magic. Carnage has been through a lot, but with two minds as one, he always gets back up to keep doing what he loves. Murder, murder, and, you know, more murder. Carnage is chaos! Yeah, he's... he's gonna win. There are some oh, mysteries God. the world holds which no one so is meant insane. to know. Every voice. day, something, somewhere, comes ever closer to destroying everything you hold dear. One such secret is the Diclona. Uh, no big deal. They're just a race of crazy people who want to infect human beings to make more Diclonae and then wipe out all of humanity. Oh, look at the cute little horns. They look oh, like up, kitty ears. Here. To accomplish this, the Diclona would have to rely on first our primary source. Kind. Of course, better known as Lucy. Luckily for everyone, some important people figured this out and captured her. And now it's time okay, for your only warning. Right, Lucy's methods. Right. Let's just say they're not for the faint. Really, that much. And not let's backwards. also say that those lucky not important those people were about to get very, very unlucky. Jesus Christ, what's happening? <laughs> to truly understand, let's take a step back. As an infant, Lucy was abandoned by her parents and left alone to suffer a life of oh, constant discrimination. God, it was the worst it was the scene horde, in the whole anime. Right, even the average the kid worst. hates growing up in an what orphanage, but it was dog. especially painful for her. Until she found a stray puppy and decided to take care Ooh. of it. That adorable little critter and her became best friends. And then the other kids uh, from the orphanage went out uh, and beat it to death the worst. and forced her to watch. <laughs> oh, oh, I could take that the first time well, I saw no it. shit she wants to kill everyone. Go you know ahead, not Lucy. Human. Tear up those People like you. Yeah. Poor thing just freaking painted the room red. Oh. Damn. This was the first time Lucy unleashed her psychokinetic vectors. As a Diclonius queen, Lucy is meant to use these vectors to infect ordinary human beings with the Diclonius. Seven virus. feet. Okay, oh, it's 28 at once. Okay, maybe it's not so 11 much meters. More. Or, unless For simplicity's sake, think know. of the vectors as invisible Low arms which can spread Oh, yeah, the frequencies. Back. Lucy can use up to 28 vectors with a normal range of about six to seven feet. 
When she okay, gets really serious, her horns grow and the vectors get Mariko. way longer okay, yeah. and stronger. Okay, so Mariko she can vibrate has her more vectors at manga. different frequencies, and each level of vibration has different effects. Kind of like that thing that my ex-wife had on the nightstand <laughs> that I thought was one of those crazy pens. Come on. At low frequencies, her vectors can pass through Nana. objects with no effect. At a medium uh, frequency, the vectors become solid, like extendable hands, while Bono. still completely Not invisible. Bono, freaking, uh, These can be used as shields and beat. lift heavy the objects. Douchebag military oh, guy. Oh man, if I had those things, I'd be messing with people all the time. Like tying their shoes from across the room. Also, since this seems to be a thing in this episode, she can fly. It's not really she just flying, she's just lifting herself, herself off the ground. With the third frequency, Lucy turns her vectors into invisible blades. These can oh, cut yeah, through people and bend sister. metal. And with the last and highest frequency, Lucy gets explosive. No, really. At this level, they finally become visible and can strike with enough force to detonate. Damn. They don't call this chick the queen for nothing. That I don't know. Unfortunately, Lucy is not always in control of what she does. Turns out she has developed several alternate personalities. Yeah, like yeah, Mew. Yeah, getting like shot Mew. in the head can do that to you. That injury specifically created Mew, a passive, almost childlike persona which exists as a coping mechanism for Lucy's trauma. As DNA Mew, voice, Lucy would finally find friends right. and began That's forging a path spoke, toward a hopeless kid. redemption. Unlike her third personality, the so-called DNA voice, which constantly whispers in her ear that she's got a job to do. Kill them all, Lucy, before they hurt more puppies. Ooh, Pretty much. That's kind of how it went down. She could do it, too. Lucy's fast enough to block bullets from a point-blank range. And once, she actually saved herself from a bullet after she had already been shot. As in, while the bullet was traveling between her skin, and her heart. It looks like she's getting oh. shot by an MP5, which fires bullets at nearly 900 miles per hour. With her body type, the distance between Lucy's skin and heart is less than an inch, probably around 2.4 centimeters. Given the bullet speed nice. and the distance her vector would have to reach from her back before the bullet hit her heart, her vector had to move nearly 1,900 miles per hour. That's over twice the speed of sound. It is she fast. She can throw a pen through a guy's skull. Brutal. And even tossed this giant boulder. When compared to this guy, Bando, whom we know nah, is six feet tall, is we can determine the boulder weighs about 75 tons. Her vectors are also tough enough to block a missile from the Air Force. While the exact model of missile is unspecified, it is fairly large and likely an air-to-surface type. I bet it's one of the Air Force's slams, or standoff land attack missile, built off the back of the Navy's harpoon missile. In fact, a harpoon is used against a different type of one point. point. So this piece slammed thing. into her vector at 500 people. miles per hour with a 1,000 pound bomb. explosive yield. And it didn't even phase her. Even without a vector shield, she survived a pretty nasty explosion herself. So it did knock okay. her out. Impressive, but how about the time she punched through an island? A strike literally compared to nuclear fusion. I have heard of this. This kicked up a 100-foot tidal wave and a 9.2 magnitude earthquake. A level so high, there's only been four comparable quakes ever recorded. Her vectors can be as wide as buildings and reach into outer space. Except that's about when Lucy reaches her limit. Right. As a Diclonius, Lucy has a few severe weaknesses. Her vectors can be nullified if she's struck in the forehead or if one of her horns are broken. Also, if Lucy pushes herself too hard, she starts to melt. Kinda like ice cream um, out in the Texas sun. I'm not aware It's of that. not pretty. She's just a big puddle of goop Christ. with a face. But she's still a total badass, even at her meltiest. While suffering agonizing pain, she was capable of single-handedly halting a massive military threat, while healing and protecting the person she loved most. Perhaps oh, redemption wasn't so hopeless after all. Hey, let's watch her kill some more people. <laughs> what? Oh, you're gonna show the one who's tearing not up or, or just everybody apart. Nice. Cool. Okay. All right, the combatants all right, are set. Well, Let's the... end this debate once and for all. But first, Lucy be crazy. is definitely much more buffed than what I gave her credit for compared to the manga. She has incredible feats and, again, 28 vectors at a range of 11 meters. That's a lot. And they're visible, but then they can turn visible when they get into an explosive territory. However... Despite all that, she's still able to catch the bullet at that speed. But I'm pretty sure not only is Carnage faster than her, Car Carnage doesn't have any real way to die. Lucy can't really kill him.
Carnage has ways to kill Lucy. He's fast enough he could nail her in the forehead, disabling her vectors, and then tear her apart. No matter what Lucy does to Carnage, she will, he will just get back up and together again. With his only real weakness being fire and sound, which Lucy can't really exploit. I mean, unless her vectors create vibrations, I don't think they work that way. I have to go with Carnage on this one. He's just he's just too too stronger than him. All right, let's go, with Carnage. Loving that model <laughs> of Lucy, except there never is one. Probably gonna use the maximum Carnage model. Of Carnage. Oh God. Oh, she, oh, she's new right now too. Oh boy. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Die. <laughs> I don't think so. Not yet. Huh? Oh boy. Oh. oh man, look at this combat. You don't even get to fucking see it. <laughs> oh, ho! oh my god. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> Nothing. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> His spider sense, too, allows him to, to avoid half this or just get hit and not get hit. <laughs> whoa. Whoa. Oh my god! <laughs> Slice of dice! <laughs> oh, nuts. This is probably not smart enough to duck the way to kill him either. Oh, oh here we go. Whoa, blood bullets! Uh oh, uh oh. Getting her. Here we go. Visible vectors. <laughs> it ain't happening, Luce. It just ain't gonna happen. <laughs> it's raining. You're bleeding. <laughs> I love this. Get fucked, Lucy. Oh. Ooh, whoa, whoa. Look at you go. Traveling up her vectors! <laughs> oh, 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 vibrate! Oh! Oh, oh, oh! Does it hurt yet? Don't worry. <laughs> oh. I'll put you out of your misery. <laughs> oh. Oh. What? He can survive this! There's no way he would die from this! He survived the gene bomb! What? KO. Are you fucking Those kidding kids me? In the orphanage, then Cletus, Lucy really hates no! the killers, and for good reason. Doesn't Carnage was a challenge. Goddamn opponent. sense! It was incredibly difficult for Lucy to deal any lasting damage against him. He had the durability advantage in the bag, though Lucy fighting as a puddle proved she could take a lot of pain and keep on fighting. Sadly, Carnage came up short in pretty much everything else. Right, Carnage was tough, but not invincible. Even his surviving that gene bomb isn't quite as impressive as it sounds. Since he had no Why other feats to even remotely back up planet. I'm sorry, hold on, hold on. Apocalypse's gene bomb, powered by celestial technology. Celestials also being the strongest beings in the Marvel Universe. Did not create a blast equivalent to its planetary range. In fact, its explosion was smothered in a similar method to the Tritium Bomb, and yet appeared smaller, which did not surprise Apocalypse. The Carnage symbiote's immunities likely canceled the bomb's biological attack. What? ...durability, and the bomb was more akin to a biological weapon anyway. While Carnage's tendrils could pass speeds of Mach 2, Lucy's vectors once reached into outer space. By timing her accompanying monologue and comparing the longest vector's length to the curvature of the Earth, it's clear she reached over 2,400 miles in 20 seconds max. Way longer than Carnage's two-mile feet. All this means her vectors were moving at least 440,000 miles per hour. 
more than 500 times the speed of sound and 250 times okay so she's car. faster but that doesn't Good explain how she managed that. to kill and this was really the biggest hurdle with lucy's redonkulous speed and carnage's healing powers it all boiled down to one thing who could hit the killing blow first i mean Carnage could respawn from scraps, so the only way to beat him for good was to totally vaporize him. And Lucy had the perfect answer to that. Uh. Remember that time she hit an island so hard she caused a 9.2 magnitude earthquake and a 100 foot tall tidal wave? Such a feat would require an enormous amount of explosive energy, approximately 31,000 tons of TNT, similar to the bomb that hit Hiroshima. It's literally compared to nuclear fusion Which I guess in the Elfin League manga. Than Apocalypse Elfin team. lead, it's German. <laughs> The point is, in order to beat Carnage for good, Lucy needed to totally obliterate him. And she could do that. The heat produced within the initial impact of a nuclear explosion, explosion. can reach temperatures up to 185 Fire. degrees Fahrenheit. All more right. than 18 times hotter than the surface of the sun. And Despite top of his ridiculous feeling factor, there's no evidence to suggest he could survive complete incineration. Also, human blood burns at the 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, leaving nothing for the superhero to regenerate from. All right. Heat was Carnage's biggest weakness. Okay. Even if Lucy's explosive force was just a fraction of this, it would still have been far too much for him. She just needed to smack him before he could power through her vectors, which chances were pretty slim for that happening anyway, because there's a bunch of them and they're so damn fast. Hitting Carnage with a big explosion punch was way easier. Cletus and his symbiote may have had the endurance, but Lucy's space-worthy speed, overwhelming presence, and nuclear strength won the day. She dealt the carnage needed Alrighty. for a total victory and took the lead. There, I said it right, Wiz. Happy? The winner is Lucy. All right. Still surprised to even see her in Death Battle. This was... Thanks for watching. This was a very cool fight. fight. You can get a first Regardless. and watch her commentary by clicking that box so, over there. Thank you, Chad. And if All you right, want the battle you. music from this episode, you can get it in the link in the description below. You're not Chad. Oh, Optimus Prime versus a Gundam? Is that what it is? Is that what that is? Yeah, a Gundam! Oh, that's cool! I'm totally down for that one! That is awesome! I haven't actually watched Gundam myself, but I've uh, I've known about it for a very long time and I have friends who watch it, so another wicked awesome robot fight. We better get that in 3D because it's as good as it's gonna be as good as Voltron versus the Power Rangers. It'll be awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and leave a comment if you also have to react to it in the future. And I will see you guys next time. Laters!